Today, we are not gonna use the mass paint node, but we are going to generate an animation just like this, where an object, an image, whatever you would like is going to follow a path that you generate. It's a really cool technique, and it gives you complete control over your graphic animations. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and hop straight into it. I've got a fusion composition already set up here that we're gonna play with, and all that I have here is this little rectangle that's been, uh, getting quite the number of miles in the past tutorials. But what I would like to have this do is have this little square follow a custom path that I draw. So instead of messing with the splines or the position of the merge node, we're gonna draw a path ahead of time. If you've done anything in Blender before, it's kind of a similar concept. Now, like any one of these tutorials, there is always multiple ways to do this, but I'm gonna walk you through the way that I feel like is the most consistent and the best and the most dynamic and the most goodest. The first thing we need to do is add in a poly Node. Now for this tutorial, I actually would like to animate the path itself as well. You don't have to, you could just add in a polygon node, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a background node. Let's make this a nice green. Ooh, that's pretty bright. Let's maybe do blue. That's <laughs> it's a little less invasive. And now what we need to do is we add in a polygon node and you can drag and drop it in from the toolbar up here, or you can go to your tool menu, type in polygon, insert and now we can connect it to our background node okay so let's go ahead and draw our path and so you can use as many points as you'd like but for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to keep it very simple and i'm just going to do two points i'm going to go here and here doesn't matter where if we would like to see our path what we can do is just add a little border width to our polygon Boom, there you go. Now by default, when you insert a polygon node and you draw a path, it's going to animate the path itself or the shape of it. And what that means is that if I were to go somewhere down later in the composition and move this point, then it's going to animate that path. So if I hit play, it's gonna animate the path. For the purpose of this tutorial, I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna hit Control Z a couple times and I'm gonna uncheck this keyframe. Now I would say there are two or three little tidbits of magic that make this work and make this really cool. And the first little tidbit is gonna live on the polygon node again. And we're gonna go over to the area where it says right click here for shape animation. And we are going to right click and hit publish. And what this does is it makes the path data accessible to any other node in our fusion composition. It also unlocked this modifier here and we get this value and this is the value for our polyline path or shape. So what we need to do now is connect some aspect of our rectangle node branch to that path. And there again, are multiple ways to do this. You could do this with a transform node. Uh, it wouldn't work very well with the actual rectangle node because its position isn't defined by a center position. It's got X offset and Y offset. Now what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use the transform node. In particular, I'm using the XF node because it, again, it has a center position attached to it. Let me go ahead and hit add. And now we've got our transform node. And all we need to do is we need to go to that center position, <clears throat> excuse me, right click and hit path, not animate, not modify, not pu path, path is the one you want. And now what this has done is it's generated a path for the transform node connected to our little rectangular shape. So we can go down here in the modifiers tab of the transform node, right click, go to connect to polygon one polyline value. And instantly it is going to snap to our polygon shape. Now for a lot of these kind of graphic animation tips and tools, the order of operations doesn't matter too much, but in particular for this type of effect, it is gonna be important that with the polygon node, you publish your path first, and then on a transform node, a merge node, or something with a center position, you right click and hit path to generate a path for that value, and then you're gonna connect the path to the polygon path. And from here, this is where things get really cool and really interesting. You'll notice that we have our displacement already keyframed here. It kind of does that same thing, right, as the polygon node where it's going to automatically keyframe something for you. I can uncheck that. And if I slide this right and left, whoa, wow, look at that. It's going to follow the path. And if that's all that you were looking for, I guess top of the morning to you. And I hope you have a good day. But there are a few things that we can do that make this really cool and really powerful. Now, for one, if you wanted this to sit a little bit above or below the line itself, you can do that. And it's still going to follow the trajectory of your polygon gone, which is very cool. But let's say that the shape of the line itself isn't exactly what you'd like, or you like to have a little bit more control with how this polyline animates. 
while still keeping the shape attached. Well, what you're gonna need to do is you click on the polygon node itself, and we need to make sure we're on the modify only option, this top left corner here. If you're on the beginning one, it's gonna add more points. I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit modify with, I'm going to drag and select these two points. And now when we drag and select these points, First off, we're gonna get some handles so that we can change the curvature of our path. And again, if I go back to the rectangle node, oop, the transform node, excuse me, modifiers, displacement, it's gonna follow our path, really cool. But again, what if we want some more control? Well, what I can do is I can drag and select this polygon, making sure I'm using the modify only option, right click, go polyline, publish, publish points. Now, if I go back to the tools tab of our polyline node, all of our points are published here. And for any graphic artist or anybody who wants a little bit more specificity, this is where things can become really powerful. So I can begin to give some actual coordinates to our points and where they're located in our fusion composition. Now the points themselves are gonna be coupled in X, Y position. So if you want to split them up, you'll need to right click, go modify width, and then X, Y path, which does become a bit cumbersome. But if you are ever trying to animate um, the Y position or X position separately, that's what you're gonna have to do. It, again, it is a little bit obnoxious, but that's what you're gonna have to do from my understanding. So from here, you might have, um, so from here, there's probably a couple follow-up questions. One, okay, well, I've got my curvature all set up here, but what if I wanna animate the, the curvature, right? So maybe I wanna drag this handle and have it kind of ramp up like this. Well, what you're gonna need to do is we need to go and animate that path again, right? We publish the path down here, but now it lives in our modifier tab. So what I can do is I can go to the modifier tab on our polygon modifier, click on the value and make sure we're on, we're on the poly line here, right? We're not on this X, Y thing that we modified earlier. Go however far forward you wanna go. And now we can grab this handle and it will animate our curvature. And again, if I were to go back to that transform node, mess with the displacement, it's gonna follow that path. Now, the last question that you probably have that I'm gonna answer in this video is, what if I wanna animate my line on and I would like to have the rectangle follow the length? Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. And most of you might've done something similar by like pinning a node and then connecting them. Well, when you start doing things with modifiers, it gets a bit funky when you pin stuff. So what we need to do is we need to hover over this property, look in that bottom left-hand corner and make a mental note or a screenshot it of what this property's name is. So for me, it's polygon one dot right length. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the transform node that we have set up modifiers. And then we're gonna set an expression for our displacement that links the two. Now you can either right click and hit expression, or you can go into the entry field, hit equals. That's gonna drop down this little expression field that we can use to equate properties to each other. So again, what I'm gonna do is type in polygon one dot, I think it was right length money. So we'll no longer have control of our displacement slider because it is now linked to the length property of our polygon. So if I were to go to our polygon node and decrease the length, there you go. It's gonna write on with our polyline, polygon, polygon shape. Just a quick reminder, this is my second channel. If you're looking for more editing specific tips, head over to the main and I also stream editing live. So make sure you check out the stream in the description. Hope this helps and if you have any questions, join the Discord.